Hello everyone, we're so excited to share with you what we've been working on for our machine learning and artificial intelligence project. Our project name is Chowder, and let's get right into it. A vast proportion of people in the world are working towards living a healthier and happier lifestyle. In the United States alone, 45 million people go on a diet every year to improve their health, and a key component to this improvement is counting and tracking calories and other nutritional measurements. However, oftentimes calorie tracking is just such a burden. Thinking about searching through pages upon pages about calorie information can be daunting and challenging, leaving the average dieter lost. So the, ca the very challenging part of calorie tracking is this like very unsavory bridge between the food that you're eating and the final calorie count that comes out of that food. In order to make this simple and easy and straightforward, we devise a way to use object detection and foreground pixel detection in order to successfully compute food calories and help revolutionize your diet. So how are we gonna do this? First, we're gonna use an existing data set called ECUST, which is 19 different food images and 3000 images in total that all include some food and a calibration object, a coin that is later used to determine the relative size of the food. Then we train a faster RCNN object detection model with a subset of these images to complete the recognition or machine learning part of the project. We use the model to detect images like apples and then pre-process the images by cropping the boxes and determining its measurements based off of how large it is compared to the coin. Using the approximate width, length, and height, we estimate the volume of the food. This requires two images. The top view and side view are needed for the algorithm to understand the general 3D shape of the food. After the recognition and estimation steps, we will use the volume to convert into caloric counts based on the original food type. For example, if the food is labeled as an apple, we're going to use a caloric conversion to determine how many calories a 300 centimeter squared apple will be. Now we have a complete product that uses images of food, recognizes the type of food it is, and calculates the amount of calories the food has. So here is what we have accomplished. All right, so for our demo, I'm gonna take a photo of this apple from the top, as well as from the side, and then we'll run it through the algorithm. All right, so we'll be running this script that we've written, and what it will do is it will process the images, run them through our object detection, and then run it through our grab cut algorithm, and finally predict the total number of calories. Notice how we need both the side and the top image with a coin as a reference to be able to accurately estimate the volume and calories of the apple. These are the images of the bounding boxes around our fruit. And now, as you can see, these are the grab cut foreground pixel extracted images. And finally, using all this information combined, we get the final calorie count. Cool. So. The machine learning part of our project was building an object detection model. So in order to have the best possible object detection model, we wanted to try various different hyperparameters and figure out the best combination to give us the best results. In order to compare these different combinations, we used a metric called mean average precision. How mean average precision works is it uses this other metric called IOU, or intersection of a union, to see how the overlap, see the overlap between the object detection box, so the box that was detected, and the actual labeled box on an image. And then using this, it's able to come up with a mean average precision value for different training models. We first took our baseline hyperparameters from the faster RCNN paper, the model that we based our um, our training based off of, and then we modified each of these hyperparameters one by one and then ran our model. Then we used mean average precision to figure out what's the best value for each of the hyperparameters. And this final combination of all of these best values was our final result. So we changed things like the learning rate, regularizers, step count, initializers, and several other things. Let me show you some graphs with our results. Here's mean average precision compared to step count. So here you could see we started around 2,000 steps, and here we got a mean average precision of about 80%. So as we increase step count, mean average precision continued to increase until we hit about 10,000 steps. And at this point, 
increasing step count further didn't increase mean average precision anymore. So we decided to use step count equals 10,000 as our optimal value for that hyperparameter, since any more increases to step count would only increase overfitting and not actually improve our results. Here's another example. So these are regularizers. These are used to provide errors or provide um, additional, like a penalty to different values for example, your weights and biases. So this prevents overfitting because lower values, which are more likely to better generalize to data outside of our training set are preferred rather than really high weights and really high biases that only fit um, the very specific images. So in this case, we can see that using a weight of 0 0.01 or even lower than that actually ended up with the best results for both of these two types of regularizers we tried. Um, this is in line with the findings from the faster RCNN paper that we based this off. On the side of the calorie estimation uh, performance analysis, we aim for a 20% error of all the different categories of different foods that we detected, which was better than the original model that we based it off of. Uh, and as you can see, only three of the food categories were over that 20% error threshold. And as well as that, a majority of our estimations were better than the original or within 3%, as you can see in green and yellow. So while training, um, this model and building our grab cut algorithm, we ran into a bunch of challenges. So let me first talk about some challenges in the machine learning side of things. So while trying to figure out the best combination of hyperparameters, we need to figure out which ones to change and what values we should try. To figure this out, we read a bunch of papers, a bunch of articles, and read a lot of documentation about faster RCNN and how it worked. And through this, we figured out all those hyperparameters we talked about before and what we should try. From our step count graph, we figured out that 10,000 steps was the optimal amount of steps to prevent overfitting and have the highest possible mean average precision. Unfortunately, due to time limitations, we weren't able to train each of our hyperparameter combinations to 10,000 steps, but only to 2,000 steps. This may have adversely affected the results because certain combinations may have only converged to higher mean average precision values at the higher step thresholds. Finally, we needed to figure out a way of how we could train all of these um, models with these different combinations of hyperparameters and do it efficiently because we only had so many credits we could use. But yeah, we only had so much time and resources we could spend. So we built a hyperparameter training plan, which we first figured out how long it would train take to train each of the models with the given hyperparameters. And we figured out exactly how, how many hyperparameters we could test. Then we built a plan that used each of those um, combinations of hyperparameters and we trained each of them. First training it on a tensor processing unit on Google Cloud and then bringing the trained model over to our personal machine to run validation in parallel to optimize the whole process. Because we wanted to run that validation in parallel and also work on producing the final caloric estimations, we needed a core detector class that we could use for all these different uh, applications. On the other hand, another interesting challenge for implementation was the beta error estimation. So we use an algorithm called GrabCut, which takes the foreground pixels out of an image, and we use that pixel count to count the total volume of whatever food object we're looking at. Unfortunately, GrabCut needs a lot of tinkering with, so our issue was that it wasn't returning all the foreground pixels. And so we use a beta value, which is basically a tried and tested um, proportional gain that we add to our equation to be able to compute values for different uh, food items correctly. And so that was also a very interesting challenge to run by. We can't wait to see what people do and how we revolutionize people's diets with chowder. Thank you.